Hello and welcome to Citizen's Commodore 64 programming series with me, Deadline. This time we're going to be taking it back and we're going to be showing you uh, our faces and things like that. I'm Deadline. This is the Citizen Studio. <clears throat> we have uh, Clicky over here. He's sleeping this time because. Uh, apparently we're not getting a whole lot of views on there so we're gonna put him to the back burner and let him sleep for a while while we concentrate on things like this programming video so we're gonna be doing more programming videos we're gonna be doing more things like reviews and also some other projects that we got going on so without further ado let's get into what we're talking about this time on City Zen. This is it, the disk copy tool, or the disk tool. Let me find the actual program here. We'll run it. We're gonna take a look and see what it looks like. All right, so for this, for this installment, we're gonna be looking at part nine of the disk format, or the, the Cities in Disk Tool example program that we've been working on. I know it's been a while, <clears throat> but here we are. So in this installment, we're gonna be looking at how to format a disk, how to erase files, and also we're gonna do a thing where we actually write the program, the disk tool example program, to the disk itself. So it's kind of like cloning itself. But really all it is is just taking what's in memory from a certain memory location to the end there of that memory and you know writing it to a disk so it can be run separately like if you wanted to copy this to somebody else's disk all you gotta do is load it up write the program no copy program needed in between but anyway let's close this for a minute and take a look at the programming right let's get on with it so we're gonna take what we've got already from part 8 and that's our last video and then we're gonna expand on that so first thing uh, we're going to introduce here Let's actually update the comments at the top first. So this is going to be disk format and erase file plus save self program. I guess that's how you could describe it. Uh, yes, it's based on code from codebase64.org. Go there, you can see all the stuff that we're working with for this project. But I'm converting it to kick assimilar as we go. Um, now, for this one, we're going to further increase the library. I'm going to include print macros.asm. So that's going to give us a little more uh, options with printing on the screen and such. Um, this is uh, going to be the same, except we're going to move the screen data to 1800, and that's to that's so we can expand the actual program a little bit without having to worry about writing over data that's in the memory. So now let's take a look at the vars. Uh, that's also going to be moving. We're going to move that data location to 1FD2 for vars. Drive number dot byte zero. That's for the drive number variable that went over in part eight. Uh, file name, dun dun, disk data, disk tool data. Yes, yes. File name. Okay. So now, yes, yes. Okay. This is for the um, data that we're the one block of data that we're manipulating. Um, our zero point our zero page pointers here for working with uh, other functions and now at this point we're going to add um, 
a file name, PRG underscore file name, so that we can save the actual program. And this is where we're going to get the name of the program. So we're going to, going to put encoding as screen code mixed. And so the text will be disk tool copy dot PRG. And that will give us a little section of memory that we can store the actual file name of the new copy, right? So we're going to do, and this one is the, the length of that data there. So we're going to dot byte 16. <clears throat> so it's going to be 16 bytes disk tool copy dot PRG. Okay. So far, so good. Now we're going to need also to store uh, where we're we going to be getting the data from when we save the new copy of the program. So I've already pre calculated where all this stuff is going to be stored. And we're going to store that at PRG start. And let's just equals. 0801, which is the basic start of basic on the Commodore 64. And then uh, dot constant PRG end, and that will be stored at 2150 because that is the length of the compiled program. All right, so that's going to tell the save operation all its little bits that it needs. Yeah. Okay, for disk data. Um, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. Yes, this is where we we are getting our one block of data, I believe. Let me just check this data ASM. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So that's our one block of data that we that I created and so that you can do a test save to your disk, right? And it also is the same location where if you, if we run this uh, randomized disk data, it's going to fill all that data with random numbers. Okay. All right, back to this section. We're going to move this location also to fit within our new code. So it's gonna be at 2000 hex. And uh, we're going to leave that the same. Basic upstart is 080D, main program, yes. What else is different here? Store 8 into drive number, yes. Copy this, or change to white print, yes. Kernel char out. Um, copy disk data, data to working memory area, 6000. Jump super team, copy disk data. Let me just take another look at that though. Is it actually? Yes. Disk data and data start. So data start. Did I make a, yes, here it is, 6,000. That's where we have our temporary data. This is not what, we have an, two sections of memory, right? The first one is going to be at 2,000 hex, right? And it's always going to be, con it's like a constant section of memory that we can call back. That's what that's for. But 6000 is where we're actually going to be manipulating the data. That's what that means. <clears throat> All right, um, where are we at? Now, let's set up the SID. We've already done that. That's from the last section, or section, or part eight of what we did. So, uh, draw screen is the same. Draw drive number is the same. Yep, it's all the same. Down to here. Uh, main loop. We're going, let's just add some comment just to make it look a little more pretty. Main loop. All right. <clears throat> 
Mm-hmm. And then here we're checking keyboard. Right? And that is jump subroutine get in. We'll take this section of code out. L is for load data. This is from our previous examples. S is for save data. V view data. R randomize data. E restore original data. Alright, and then we'll take this section out as well. So then we have the D for directory. Yes. Uh, C change drive. And T status. And I believe that's it, except we want to add in. We want to add in. A, before. Where are we at? Chain. We need. Did I put directory? Directory here. Okay, so here we need to put in, it, it can be anywhere, but I'm just going to go here. Initialize disk. And that is a format of the disk. Now we can expand on this later to make it more complex. Like if you want to add in your own custom file names and things like that. But we're not doing that. We're just going to be working with um, some static data for that stuff. Key I. That's from our macros. That uh, is from the macros.asm file. All these um, keys and things. They are actually supposed to be numbers, but that's what these macros do. It makes it a little more easier to read for humans. Then check key plus. We're going to branch if not equal to check key plus. That means we didn't hit the I key. We're going over it. We're going over this section. So, best case, we're going, if, if we did hit the I key, we're going to increment the background border color, I mean. And then jump subteam, format disk. Alright, pretty simple. What else can we do here? We can jump start after that. That will keep the program running. Okay, but we have yet to write the format disk routine and that's where we're what we're going to get to what else can we do here we can add the a for erase file you know it probably should be e but I think we've already used e for something else anyway it'll be in the menu I've already edited a new pet screen a pet mate screen and as you can see I'll run it again this is what the new one looks like. You've got uh, all the options are going to be enabled on this one since it'll be the last. Uh, this will be the last uh, uh, in the series of the disk tool example program. So all the options are there. You got status, directory, initialize disk, erase file, save data, load data, write program, change drive, view data, restore data and randomize data all that's going to be in there anyway getting back to putting in the keys here um, where am I at okay so I'm going to put a check key with an exclamation mark in front which that this just lets you add multiple labels of the same thing and then you can do stuff like this branch if not equal exclamation mark check key plus which it will go to the next check or uh, exclamation mark check key right if you did minus it would go back one if you did plus plus it would go two I don't know if you can do more than one plus or not but don't generally need to do that so anyway I'm going to compare that with key a from the macros. I'm going to branch if not equal to, you guessed it, check key plus. This will go down to the next one here. Right? If you don't hit the A, check for the C. Pretty simple. And then we're going to, we'll do another increment of the background. 
Or the border, I mean. Is it the border? Uh, 53280, 53281. Put it in the comments. <laughs> I don't know. Need a little more. Well, don't really need, but I think it's cool when people write comments because we get to interact with you guys a little more. So, anyway, where are we at? Where are we at? Erase file. We're going to jump server to erase file. And then jump start. Continue on the program if you erase the file. Yeah. So then W is going to be write program to disk. This is actually writing the program that's running to the disk. So we're going to put the check key. By now you should understand that each one of these is going to have an exclamation check key so you can jump to the next check. You know? That's what we're doing. Let me scroll down a little bit. Um, what else can I say? Uh, we need to put compare with number key W. Key W is what we're checking here. Branch if not equal to check key plus. That will jump down to check C. Again, we don't have to do this part. We're just incrementing that so that we know that a key's hit. Because if you when we jump back to start, it's gonna reset that border color. This is W right program. And we'll jump to start. And there are all the keys are being checked for at this point, I believe. We'll find out soon enough. So now we've got. Doo -doo -doo. Whoa, what is all this stuff? Show directory. Let's put in some comment there to break from the key checking so that we can scroll down right and so we can say okay let's check keyboard okay now it's the show directory subroutine all right so show directory and we're going to do the same thing for here it just makes it a little easier to read and sort of break things apart in the code um, hmm, yes, okay. And then here we're going to change this. We're going to change this to say load data because that's another um, subroutine for load data. This is all from uh, previous videos here. Let's see what else. Save data. Yep. Let's do this save data and then go to the next which is format disk oh that's what we got to put in is the format disk and uh, we'll just go ahead and start down here where the part 8 disk code ends and we're going to put in part 9 disk code end oh, we're just going to actually take that out Bear with me just a moment. See, I've already got all this written out. I've uh, made it work. And now I'm just sort of copying it over, talking about it as I go. So here, we're going to put the format disk subroutine. Adding it on to what we've already got. Uh-huh, format disk, colon label so that we can uh, know where we're going to be jumping to confirm format disk confirm hmm so what we want to do here is we want to draw confirm question okay All right so I want I bet you're wondering where we're getting that and I think if I am uh, thinking about this correctly, it's not there. 
Hmm, where's the confirmation? Let's take a look. Control. Let's try. It's somewhere, but where is it? <laughs> is it in... Hmm. I'm getting a little lost here. So bear with me. Print subroutines. Nope, that's not in use yet. Is it in macros? But it's a jump to subroutine, so it's got to be in, in memory somewhere. Hmm. Is it disk data? No. Hold on. Probably gonna wind up. Okay, so it's a new subroutine that I have yet to put in here. So okay, we're, we're just sort of bear with me here. <clears throat> I wrote this a while back to get this done, but I haven't uh, made the video until now. So, that's going to be a new subroutine, <clears throat> basically. Draw confirm question. And then, FD loop to format disk loop to, that's abbreviated. Uh, jump subroutine kernel get in. Now, what we're doing here is the draw confirm question is going to say, Are you sure? yes or no right and so here we're going to be looking for the Y key so if we're going to compare we're going to compare that with zero branch of equal to um, FD loop 2 so that's all it's doing right there it's just waiting for a key to be hit so then F uh, format disk uh, check Y hit so yes, yes, format the disk, right? So compare that with key Y. And then we'll branch if equals, if it does equal yes, we will format underscore disk All right. return from subroutine so return from subroutine is if you hit no it's going to go back return from subroutine then jump to start from that other main loop so format underscore disk will be here now we're going to clear the screen here right with clear screen B which is a different clear screen we're gonna do blue comma light blue and it'll make it look like the screen when you first turn on the Commodore and uh, from the print straight from the print let's take a look at this print macros right so I went ahead and made some print macros to make printing things to the screen a little easier so print screen, print string I mean is just that, it prints a string onto the screen wherever the cursor's at, right? And there's also print line feed and print color, which is, it changes the color of the text. And that's what we're working with. And you'll get to see it once you download the program and stuff. So what we want to do here is um, print string FD text. Okay, format disk text for short. And then print line feed. Do another print line feed here. It just makes it a little easier to read. And, you know, there's a lot of code that's going to be embedded there. So, I mean, it just makes it look a little nicer. I'm going to load X with 0, load A with um, 15. Now what we're doing here is we're telling the the disk 
colonel set name right what command uh, load X is gonna be and yeah, we'll get to that in just a second yeah so just keep in mind that this FD command this is what we're doing we're setting the command that we're sending to um, to the kernel set name so this will be load Y I don't know why I put a load X zero there I guess it could be taken out but uh, here we're going to put the high byte of the FD command and then we're going to jump subroutine kernel um, set name which if you recall that's used for a lot of disk operations right pretty much all of them unless you write your own machine level code to replace the kernel which I am not doing here I am just using the simple built-in stuff this is um, your file number uh, file number 15 and then load X with drive number and this will default to 8 device 8 and then load Y with 0F and this is setting secondary address so this is pretty much equivalent to <clears throat> open 15 comma or open yeah well you know open 15 8 comma 15 comma in, in basic right so. and then at the end of this little block you put kernel set LFS which logical file system it is call set LFS from kernel and that's basically opening your channel to the disk well that's setting your logic file system but then we gotta do kernel open kernel open All right So there you go, that's your open 15 comma 8 comma 15 from basic. Now we'll do a jump subroutine show drive status. Well, since we've already got it in there, it's going to put this in line. And then in this final section here. Mm hmm. Well, let's see, uh, file number. 15 jump subroutine kernel close so we're closing file number 15 here <clears throat> so just a a little note here once you set up this this is actually your command that you're setting up right then it opens it up and when you call open it's going to do that command right and that's why we're going from setting the command opening the disk and inserting that command and now once it's done it's going to show the drive status and now here we're going to close the disk channel and so we're going to also call kernel clear channel all right and then finally for this we're going to put FD out label here jump subroutine press key RTS and that will be that's your disk format 
But what else do we need? We need this FD command stuff, don't we? And the FT text right from right here, right? So this is what we got put at the end. FD text, a little block here, dot encoding, Petsky upper, and then dot text formatting disk. And then a dot a byte zero at the end so that it can end printing. And that is your block for your FD text. And then we need FD text end. All right. And also FD CMD for your actual command that we're going to be issuing to the disk drive. So what we're going to do is end zero colon new zero clean disk comma zero one. Now you can put anything in there and you can even have the program, you know, set to where you can update variables into that section. But that's not what we're doing. We're just putting in a, a, a static text here. And then some zeros at the end. FD command and sort of like a buffer. We don't need a RTS there. So that's it. That's your format drive or your format disk subroutine. So that should work as it is. All right. Now that we got done with that, let's do the erase file. And since we're working on just that one file for disk um, disk data here, right? We're going to work with that, what we've already named it. All right, back to this. So we're going to now put in a comment. This will signify that or indicate that we're working on a new subroutine erase file erase file confirm then we're going to also do the same draw confirm question that we added before but we still have yet to write the subroutine for so we did that EFC loop to jump subroutine kernel get in yes compare with zero branch if equals to zero EFC erase no EFC loop to we're just checking to see if you hit yes or not yet. EFC check Y hit. Make another label. Compare it with uh, key underscore Y. Branch equals to erase file. Erase underscore file. Because where I got erase file is the main subroutine name. Um, then RTS if you do not hit yes. I can jump back to the start. Yes has been hit. Erase the file. Okay. <laughs> Put a little comment here. Yes, erase file. All right now we're down here we've hit yes we're going to erase the file uh, clear screen we're going to go ahead and do that whole blue light blue thing again to make it look like you're back at the operating system level just a little fun little thing to do you can do whatever you want you know 
color it however you want. I just think it's kind of cool to do that. And so the file name we've already set. Um, we're going to store the accumulator in efcmd, comma, or plus three, comma, x. What are we doing here? Oh, I know why we're doing this. Because, uh, so the command for erase file, I believe, is s0 colon, right? So that's three characters. So the file name that we're going to work with is the file name of the data, right? This guy. Where do we, where do we name that? It's somewhere in here. I believe it's at the top. Let's take a look. Yes, file name, disk tool data. So it's gonna pretty much copy this section of text onto the end of S0 colon. And we're not quite here, at, quite there with the, the command, but this is just sort of setting things up. Um, right, 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 where are we at? So, all right, in it, I and X, increment the X register, compare X with file name length, right? Match if not equal to EFC, copy file name, CPFN. So, there you go. I and X, I and X, I and X. So, three increments of the X and store X with CP temp which is a zero page temporary variable. And then we're gonna load X. With zero, EFW print, race file, W print one. What am I doing here? L load accumulator with EF text, comma X. Jump, because they were printing out what we're going to be doing here. All right. Increment X, CPX, 08. Branch if not equals to EFW, print one. All right, right. So then. And now we're doing E, F, W, print two. I think this is just putting some output to the screen to let you know what's going on. E, F, command. So E, F, erase file text at the beginning. So that's just gonna say erasing, right? And then we're gonna put the file name that we're doing or the command. Yes, yes, okay, jump subroutine kernel char out inx increment the x register store x at zp temp2 just storing the x register at a different location in zero page for a moment now we're going to load zp temp into the accumulator compare it with zp temp2 Branch if not equal to EFW print to you. Load accumulator 0D. Jump subroutine. I believe that's a line feed. So at this point, we could probably just do that uh, print line feed, right? A couple times. And forget about all that kind of stuff. Which is actually just jump, so jump subroutine kernel char out. So then we're going to load the accumulator with zp temp. Then load x with the low byte of e erase file cmd, which is the command. And then load file load y with the high byte of ef cmd. And what do you think is going to happen here? We're going to, to set name because that's setting the command that we're going to be working that we're going to send to the disk drive kernel set name call set name set command right 
Then we're gonna load the accumulator with zero F file number fifteen. Load X the drive number. Wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. We want to use drive number because we don't. I mean, if we do BA, hex BA, it's going to use the last uh, used device number, but we don't want to do that. Just in case. We want to specify that we're going to be working with drive 8. will work maybe it won't all right load y with 0f again it's going to be your secondary address secondary address 15 yeah what else can I say here where are we at oh Right, so now we jump subroutine, kernel, set LFS, call set of LFS. And then we're going to jump subroutine, guess what, kernel, open. This will execute the command, call open, right? Then we'll do a show drive status. See what happened. It will give us an error. Uh, branch of carry clear to EF2, no error. But we're not gonna handle it. Yeah, we're, you know, you can handle it if you want. We're just gonna, not error check but just let you know if it's if the carry is clear that means that no error occurred I guess we should clear the carry flag before I don't know if it sets it or not it actually probably does if that's if it's saying that if it's clear right all right where are we at load accumulator with zero F now we need to close the file, file number 15, um, jump subroutine, kernel, close, jump subroutine, kernel, clear channel, and that is one word, and then uh, let's see, if, out, we're going to put a jump subroutine press key, which is just going to wait for a key to be pressed and then uh, return from server. Now, your file will be erased at this point. You'll be set back to the main loop. Now, there's only uh, one thing we're missing. Two things from this. We need EF text, right? This is your message, your output message. We're going to put Put encoding screen code mixed and then text erasing. You have text end. Um, EFCMD. Do we actually use EF text in anywhere? Don't think so. I just I put an extra label there. You can ignore that if you want. It just helps me to understand where we're at a little better. So this is your command text, right? For EF underscore command. Command string. But we also want to add some buffer space on there. 
2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we're going to put uh, 16 bytes at the end so it can fill in. We can copy the file name into that section. And then anything over that, <coughs> it's going to be zeros. So it's going to ignore it. Right. And then that's it. So that's your erase file, subroutine. It's getting close to the end. Now we just need to write, we're going to write the subroutine for actually writing this program onto the disk. Right? So we'll do write program. And then clear screen with black. Uh, load X with zero. We're going to do a uh, exclamation SV colon label. A load accumulator with save saving comma X. Branch of equals to exclamation SV plus. And we want to store that at screen RAM, comma X. This looks like it's a output to the screen to show you what we're doing. Right. And that's just going to be a little message down near the end. It's saving the program to disk. Yeah. All right, so at this point, this is where your SV label is at, your next SV label. Load X was zero again, and then another SV label. And then load accumulate with PRG file name, comma X. And then branch of equals to exclamation SV plus. So yeah, this is just saying, saving and then it's going to say the program file name right after that you know compare it with 27 convert to petsky to screen code the reason why is because the disk and screen codes don't actually seem to line up So you got to do a little compensation, and that is done with subtracting 40 hex. Um, don't add W colon. So if it's like less than 27 or greater than 27, it add, subtracts. I don't know. I gotta take another look at that. We'll see how it works. So we're gonna store that screen RAM plus seven because that's the end of the saving line that you're gonna be printing out. Increment the X register. Compare X ten X, which is sixteen. Branch of value course the SV minus. So hopefully that we'll print out saving file name right which is I suppose gonna be like disk tool copy dot PRG all right so here we're going to jump so no let's not do that load accumulator with 0 F load X with drive number and then load Y with FF. Then we're going to jump subroutine set kernel set LFS. And load accumulator with PRG file name length. Load X with the low byte of P. 
PRG file name and load Y with the high byte of PRG file name. This is setting the file name. Right? This is just opening up your your disk channel. That's what we did just there. And then load accumulator with the low byte of PRG start. Set start address. All right. Then load then store accumulator at ZP pointer low. Because I believe we have to work with zero page. That's why I gotta do this. Then load accumulator with the high byte of PRG start. All right, and then store accumulator at ZP pointer high. Then we're gonna uh, load the accumulator, load X. No, no, load it. So, right. So, the first is gonna be you. Um, yeah, okay, you'll see in just a second what's going on. Load X with the uh, low byte of PRG end, right? Set end address, right? So then load Y with the high byte of PRG end. And that is your, your end address is in X and Y and then so in the accumulator, we have to then set the uh, low byte ZP pointer low, and then it will automatically get the the high byte, right? So then we do do a jump subroutine kernel save, and that's how that works. And now you sent to the disk. That you want to save this portion of memory onto that channel that we just opened all right and yes that should do it and what we can do here is uh, print LF print print line feed that's what I'm doing from our macros and then jump subroutine show drive st status We'll see if we save that program or not. Jump to the routine, press key, and then RTS. Getting there. So now we have the the right program uh, subroutine written, and that's what that is. There's only two more things that we need to do. Now this is from earlier. Would you the draw confirm question? All right, so we draw. Let's write a new label draw confirm question. Let's just do this for now. RTS and then I want to see if we got any bugs or not. And then underneath this. Uh, subroutine, we're going to write this subroutine, press key, this is a press any key, All right, so print string from our new macro, press key text, put uh, pk colon, jump subroutine, kernel, wait key, and then branch of equals to pk minus if it equals zero rts if not dire press key text label underneath that with encoding petsky upper and then dot bytes zero D dot text press any key 
It's gonna put a line feed actually. That's what that zero D is doing. Dot byte zero. And that is the press key. So let's see if this is gonna run or not. <clears throat> so what does it do? Uh, no, not that. Control shift P. Yes. Come on, let's see what happens. Looks like we might have an error. Yes. The symbol dire press key text is already defined at line 638. So where is it? Let's find it. I think that might have been it. It is already defined. So we can actually take that out. Where is it? What? Let's take this one out. So we only have one in there. It doesn't really matter. Hey, looks like it's loading. Well, let's do directory. That works. Uh, T status. That's not working right. It's putting it at the wrong place. So let's figure out what's going on with that. Disk status. We'll close this. Uh, I know why. It's because from uh, chapter 8 of this, it was putting it at a different location because I moved it within the pet ski. So T, where's T? T, 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 here it is. Check key, print, okay, this is where it's at. So we need to look at that. Hmm. This is just changing the location. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just copy and paste. And, uh, you know, it's pretty much just a different way of printing out stuff on the screen. As you can see, there's just kernel char outs a bunch of times. And just left and, or key cursor down, key cursor right uh, a few times. So let's see what it looks like now. Ah, I keep pressing the wrong thing. Control Shift Alt 5. Control Shift Alt 5. F5. There we go. So let's do a T status again. There we go. And that's at the right location. C change drive. That needs to be also changed as well. Because you can see that it's going. It's putting the, the drive location down a little further from we had it before so let's look and see here it is uh, draw a drive number so let's let's find that here it is where do we put that draw a drive number Okay, so this one's actually at 04 EB this time and 04 EC. So that should fix that. Let's take a look. C, 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 yes, that is now changed to the proper location. And now T. Oh, I must change it to a drive that I have attached. T is okay status is okay directory yes okay um, let's do initialize disk and see what happens it sh should be going and doing stuff it's like it's taking a while but it's weird that uh, Seem to be caught in a loop or something. And there's no drive activity on Vice. Let's take a look. 
I initialize disk control. Oh, I know why. We need to press yes. <laughs> I forgot. That's what you do when you try and rush things here. You leave stuff out. And what we needed to see was the draw confirm question. So okay, it says formatting disk, okay. So that does work. So let's do a directory again. Clean disk, zero one, just like we programmed. Now we, let's write the program back to the disk. Hmm, there seems to be a weird problem with the text on the screen. I wonder what that means. But let's do a directory now. So there it is, disk tool copy that was written from the memory in, in and of itself. So that works. View the data. That's our data. Um, randomize data. So let's view the data again. Yep. And now let's restore the data. V. It all seems to be working. Okay. Loading disk tool data. Find out. Find out. Let's save the data. Directory disk tool data. Two blocks. It's really only one block, but. Now let's randomize the data. Yep, and load the data. View the data again. And it looks like everything's working. There's only one thing that we gotta finish, and that is this draw confirm question. And I was just getting lazy. But let's go ahead and fill it out. And this is just printing a little message on the screen to say, hey, do you want to do this or not? Right? Load Y. 0, 2, load x, 0, and then ndc loop, load accumulator with confirm text comma x, and store accumulator screen ram plus 12 plus 11 times 40 comma x. Transfer Y to A. Store accumulator. Color RAM. Plus 12. Plus 11 times 40. Comma X. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> what am I doing here? Load the accumulator with confirm. Text plus 15 comma x store accumulator at screen ram plus 12 plus 12 times 40 comma x transfer y to a store accumulator at what am I doing a rainbow type of thing here um, screen ram color ram plus 12 plus 12 times 40 and that's putting it over 12 and then 12 times 40 will be which line you want to go to because it's multiplying by 40 and there's only 40 characters per line confirm text plus 30 comma x so there's 15 characters each, it looks like. And same thing, store accumulator screen RAM plus 12 plus 13 times 40 comma X and then transfer Y to A. Okay, so the color is gonna be two from the top. That's why we loaded, loaded Y with two which is gonna be red. So store accumulator, no. Enter store accumulator color RAM plus 12 plus 13 times 40 comma X. Ah, it's gonna be red. That's what it's gonna be doing. Increment X, compare X with number 15. Branch if not equal to NDC loop RTS. And that is the draw confirm question. Let's see if it actually works now. Uh, there's an error. Disk initialize unknown confirmed text. Oh, 
Right, underneath that, there's a little block. I need to uh, put in of data so it knows what to print. And that is from Petmate. I just sort of edited it on there and copied it. So let's take a look. What happens if we hit initialize this now? So that is wrong. Something's wrong there. Let's close this and take another closer look. All right. Load while with two, load x zero, confirm text comma x, store, screen rim, plus 12 plus 11, times 40 comma x, transfer, ah, that should be tya, right? And it should be tya all the way down. Maybe that is the only problem. Let's try it again. Oh, <laughs> something terribly went wrong there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Right, we need to compare X and not Y here. Compare X with 15. Oh boy, I am getting... Yeah, there we go. That's what we want to see, right? Are you sure? Yes or no? We're going to yes. And I've got warp mode set, so this is going to be a little more bearable than you're, if you're actually doing it. So I set the directory, clean disk, zero, 01. It's working. T status, perfect. Uh, view data, good. Um, let's write the program. Ah, let's figure out what's going on with this biz here. It's really kind of inconsequential. I think I know what it is. It's this um, this business here. Um, don't add W. Oh, I've got to figure that one out. But it does work. It's only outputting to the screen incorrectly. I think I'm going to leave it for now. If anybody can help me with that, let me know in the comments. And get it set up but there you go that is the final program tutorial for the programming series for disk format for the disk let's see for the cities in disk tool example program hope you learned something I know I sure did if you got any comments or suggestions or anything like that, let me know. Other than that, this is a deadline for season. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please like. Please subscribe. Please comment. Thank you.